This is a meditation on tall buildings. It's a 9-11 poem, but it gets at it a little bit differently from people who were actually here. On, on that morning, I was uh, somewhere midway between uh, Atlanta and Macon, Georgia. And uh, so I, I had a different experience of, uh, of that, that occasion. <clears throat> this is called Tall Buildings. As high as masonry walls would go, it wasn't enough. The codes required firm support, and the limits, once the upward idea took hold, were soon reached. The Pulitzer bu Building, for example, on Park Row, had outer walls nine feet thick to carry the load, while interior iron columns supported the floors. The whole of it rose from a granite basement well over 300 feet to a cupola roof from which one could then look westward to the spire of Trinity Church, a different pinnacle below. Decades later, in the middle of the 20th century, this building stood in the path of a new approach to the Brooklyn Bridge. And, like the earlier houses that lined the site of Roebling's anchorage, was stone by stone and clamp by clamp to the last metal bracket and screw demolished. Iron girders, latticework, and columns rose. There was, for example, Gilbert's Tower Building, its frame a bridge truss, 13 stories high, and Jenny's Home Insurance Building, built in 1884, the skeleton of which carried its load to earth. Crowds gathered as these structures rose to see whether storms would topple the walls. But this never happened, not to these or others, and soon immense towers stood complete, their posts and beams in place, their uprights secure. Later still, the cantilevered City Corp building at Lexington and 53rd, floating on columns, tuned its own oscillations with a concrete block weighing 400 tons hung in its crown. Under a reflective glass and aluminum exterior, diagonal eight-story braces stiffened the inner core against a thousand feet of shearing wind, shunting the strongest gusts to ground. Some are like cathedrals, some like fortresses, some like ziggurats, and some with granite rock face begin as squat palazzi, soaring as they go. Some with setback edges, chamfered corners, rise through arches, balustrades, and pediments, through obelisks, cornices, and scrolls. Some all ornament with terracotta friezes, three-quarter dark columns, mullion windows, achieve, in any case, a standing wingless flight. And some, in black or bronze or lily white, express pure function rising from the ground, I-beamed classical Cartesian instruments. Skinned in nickel alloy, aluminum or chrome, in red veined marble, glass or staggered brick, some are narrowed to their silver crowns, while some are twinned or joined or stand alone. All walk the busy street, the lonely place, traveling on their footings toward the sky. Each encloses multitudes, dimensions, possibilities, and each a quirk of form, a touch of nice design, stands anchored to the bedrock down below, to the single instant of immediate time, in the shadow of the spire of the height to come.